Today I want to show you how to create a report like the one in front of you. We only need to follow four simple steps. Step one, we add a template from Zebra BI. Step two, we access an online data source and load our data into our Excel data model. Step three, we replace the test data with the data we just loaded. And the last and final step will be to add a slicer like the one we have in this report in order to make it nice and dynamic. Let's go. First, let's open a brand new Excel session. Then we go to step one, which is add a Zebra BI template. So we head over to Zebra BI, add page, and then from all the predefined templates, we select the one we want to have being this one for today. Now a new sheet is added to the report and all the charts are already added and the formatting is taken care of. The only thing we need to do is replace the test data which can be found over here on the left hand side by the real data. So let's import data from our SharePoint file. Let's go to data, get data, from other sources and from web. In this window we need to paste the location of our file which I have previously copied. Click OK. Then we get this navigator window, which lists all the objects which are included in our file. Today we want to load the financials. But we don't just want to load it into the file, we want to say load to. Load to gives us some additional options. We only want to create the connection and we want to add this data to the data model of this Excel report. OK. Now we see that data is being loaded. It shouldn't take too long. 173,000 rows in just over two seconds. Now we navigate to the place where we want to add the data. Basically, we want to create a pivot table which looks exactly like the test data. So we can easily link it in order to have our charts updated with the data from our data model. So we select cell B40 and head over to insert pivot table. Use this workbook's data model. That's the data we just imported. Click OK. And now let's try to create the same table. So we need budget, actuals, forecasts in the columns. And we need the months in the rows. Let's see what we have in our model. Currently we don't have the months, so these need to be added first. So we head over to data get data and then we open Power Query Editor. Once we selected our query and the date table we can move on to add column date month and what happens is that a new column is added with the month. Perfect. Close and load. Now we see over here that a new dimension will be loaded into our model. Here we go, the month, and then we just drag and drop into the rows. So the first part of our table is done. Now we need budget actuals forecast. Also, they are not available, so they need to be calculated first. This we will do in Power Pivot with measures. So we head over to measures, 
and say new measure actually what we're going to look at is the gross profit so we call our measure gross profit actuals the formula is calculate then we need to do the sum of the gross profit column and we need to add a filter in order to only get the actuals is AC. We just add some formatting. We want this to be a number with a thousand separator and zero decimal places. That's it for actuals. Actuals gross march gross profit has been created and actually it also has been added to the pivot table already. Let's do the same but for budget. Gross profit budget. The formula is more or less the same than the one from before. We can also click on check formula and then it confirms no error in the formula. Excellent. We just add some formatting. And because we need to create one more measure for a forecast, we can simply copy the one for budget and reuse it for forecast because most of it is exactly the same. So we paste it in here and the only thing we need to change is this part forecast in our data model is called FC. Give a name to the measure, gross profit FC. Change the formatting and click OK. Now we have all three measures in our table. Let's just make sure they are in the same order than our test data table. So first comes budget then actuals, then forecast. Excellent. We can get rid of that. And what we need to do now is we need to link the numbers which are feeding the charts to the pivot table we have just created. Copy and paste formulas. And now it looks a bit off. We can tell that something is not quite right. But before we check what the error might be, let's add the slicer. So I select any cell of the pivot table, go to insert, slicer. And then I want to have a slicer for the year, but there's no year. So we need to go back to Power Query Editor and do exactly the same we did for the months before. But this time we just add the year. Select the date, add column, date and year. And now we have a new column with the year which is derived from the date table. Close and load. And once this is loaded, we can go back to insert, slicer, a slicer for the year, OK. And now we can dynamically select which year we want to show. So let's select 2018, that looks nice. 2019, also fine. But now see what happens when I select 2020. Everything becomes red and minus and probably not good. So what's wrong? What's wrong is that we have zeros and zeros is not the same than blank or nothing. So zero can actually be a result. So basically we want to get rid of these zeros, but we don't just want to delete them because it needs to be dynamic. 
So when the figures of May come in, they will be automatically linked. So in order to do that, there's many different formulas we could use. Um, today we'll go for the switch true and we check whether C41 is empty. If empty, then keep it empty. Otherwise, say C41. Switch true. This should be switch. That's better. Copy and paste the formulas. And now it also works for 2020. Very nice. The only thing I don't like is the formatting of the slicer because I would like it to be on top of the report. So I select the slicer, head over to the slicer section and add the columns. Change the column number to 3 so they are next to each other. All the years are next, next to each other. Maybe I don't need the title, the header, because I guess people would know that I'm selecting the year. So what I can do here is slice settings, display header would be off. Maybe the year in here I can delete as well. Also, I don't like that the whole slicer is blue, so I also changed the formatting to something a bit more neutral, like gray. That looks nice. So now my report is linked to an online database. Whenever the data changes in the database, I simply go to the pivot table, right click and refresh. Now it's pulling again the 173,000 rows from, from SharePoint Online and I have a fully dynamic report. Not bad, right?